a medical equipment manufacturer's R&D center in Saitama. On display here, this was the first one we developed. The world's first pulse oximeter, invented in 1975. It measures the oxygen saturation of your blood using your pulse. The measurement was taken from your earlobe. It was invented by Aoyagi Takuo, an engineer at the company. He passed away in 2020 at age 84 during the pandemic. The Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers in the U.S. gave it an award for innovation in the field of medicine. We're very proud of it. Our story begins in the 1940s. Nagaoka in Niigata Prefecture lies 210 kilometers north of Tokyo. Aoyagi grew up here. He was an energetic boy that loved playing outdoors. One of his favorite spots was the temple and cemetery behind his home. The sight of the gravestones shaped his perspective on life. Fusei Masayoshi worked with Aoyagi at the same company. He remembers what his colleague told him. Aoyagi saw those gravestones and it really made him think about people's lives. He thought, what can I do? He wanted to create something useful and share it with the world. Aoyagi went on to study electrical engineering at university and got a job developing new products for a medical equipment manufacturer. But what would he make? Aoyagi had an idea. Measuring the volume of blood pumped by the heart, it was vital information when checking the heart's condition. How much blood does the heart pump to keep us alive? And how much blood is in there? Those are vital parameters at the hospital. Aoyagi's goal was to develop a device that would clip onto the skin and measure the volume of blood pumped by the heart. Something developed in the U.S. caught his eye, an ear oximetry device. It used the color of blood to measure oxygen saturation. Blood that's high in oxygen is bright red. Blood that's low in oxygen is much darker. To use the American oximeter, the earlobe was first warmed to expand the blood vessels before attaching the device. Light was shown through the earlobe. By analyzing the amount of light absorbed by the varying colors of blood, the oxygen level could be found. The equipment was rarely used in hospitals at the time. After days of research, Aoyagi realized something. Ear oximetry measured the light absorption of the skin, veins, and arteries in the earlobe. The measurement graph showed a consistently jagged line, which reflected a pulse. The skin doesn't move, and there's no pulse in our veins. However, arteries pulse in time with the heart as it pumps blood through our bodies. The presence of a pulse identifies the arteries. The pulse is the movement in our arteries. There isn't one in our veins because there isn't enough pressure. When you see a pulse waveform, that's arterial blood. That was the eureka moment, the key concept. 
By focusing on only the vessels with the pulse, the arteries which carry oxygenated blood, Aoyagi could get a more accurate measurement of oxygen saturation. This idea was the heart of the pulse oximeter. Nine hundred thirty kilometers north of Tokyo in Hokkaido, there was a doctor that was interested in Aoyagi's idea. Nakajima Susumu, who worked at a university hospital. He explains that at the time, the way to check a patient's oxygen levels during surgery was to draw arterial blood. We had to draw arterial blood constantly and then analyze it. It was a huge amount of work. A monitor or device that could easily check oxygen levels was something out of a dream. With pressing needs from doctors on the ground, Aoyagi built a prototype at Nakajima's request. He attached it to his own ear, then pinched his nose, holding his breath to see if the device would pick up the change. Holding your breath causes your oxygen levels to fall. He'd stop breathing to see if it could actually pick up that change. He turned himself into a test subject, basically, testing it over and over. He was totally dedicated. March 1974, a year after development began, Dr. Nakajima received the very first machine. This graph shows the results from the initial experiments on animals. The oxygen level measured using tests. The next test was on patients that had breathing difficulties after undergoing treatment for tuberculosis. The device was attached to the ear. Then, the moment we flicked the switch, the oxygen saturation levels appeared at once. Our experiments proved that measurement was possible. Everyone was shocked at the strength of the results. And so, by focusing on the pulse in the arteries to measure oxygen saturation, the first pulse oximeter was complete. Aoyagi decided to debut his invention at a medical equipment conference in Osaka. There, he introduced his creation, but attendees were largely uninterested. Togawa Tatsuo headed the conference at the time. He remembers the occasion. People weren't interested. If you considered the new focus on using pulse, it was a groundbreaking technique. I thought it was interesting, but I never dreamed it would become such an important invention. Then, out of the blue, Aoyagi was told by the company, there's no market for this product. The plug was pulled on his project. Aoyagi was promoted to manager, but he was given new research projects. Takeda Sunao was a younger colleague and still remembers it vividly. Aoyagi must have been so frustrated. He came up with the principle, and as an engineer, you want to see things through to the end. In the late 1970s in the U.S., there were incidents of patients under anesthesia dying from an undetected lack of oxygen during surgery. There were calls for a device that could monitor the patient's oxygen levels. A Japanese manufacturer and rival to Aoyagi's company had set its sights on the U.S. June 1977. This rival had also turned their attention to the pulse in arteries, 
It developed a pulse oximeter that measured from the fingertip. Miwa Atsushi handles the company's marketing. He explains what was happening back then. The thinking at the time was that new medical technology and products had to first be accepted in the U.S. Once they had taken root there, we saw them being re-imported back to Japan. The company decided to focus its efforts on the U.S. They first tried with the anesthesiology department at Stanford University. Their response? Interesting, but can you make it smaller? The team returned to Japan and quickly began making improvements. But while they were still hard at work in 1982, a small U.S. startup had produced its own compact product. They put it on the market before any Japanese manufacturer, quickly winning attention from medical professionals. It took off in the U.S. But what about the company that had withdrawn after developing the world's first pulse oximeter? It decided to ask a certain someone to make up for lost time. Aoyagi Taku, the man who had invented the first device. But Aoyagi was conflicted. Pulse oximeters took off because of improvements made by another company. Even though I invented the device, I couldn't achieve what they have. Then, one day... Aoyagi received a phone call. A professor at the University of California wanted to interview him. John Severinghouse was a world authority on respiratory physiology. Pulse oximeters had made a large contribution to medicine, and he was studying their history. January 1987. The professor arrived in Japan to interview Aoyagi in a Tokyo hotel. He was accompanied by Nakajima Susumu the doctor from Hokkaido that had asked Aoyagi to make the first device. He remembers that meeting. Dr. Severinghouse was a professor of anesthesiology, a world authority. He discovered that the pulse oximeter, which was so vital during operations, had first been invented and used in Japan. He wanted to learn more. During the interview, the professor unleashed a flood of questions about the development process. Aoyagi spoke in detail about the work he had done. Three months later, after returning home, Dr. Severinghouse released a paper. It was about the history of pulse oximeters. And in it... A photograph of Aoyagi was prominently featured. The paper stated that Aoyagi was the first to develop the principle used by pulse oximeters. When Dr. Severinghouse met Aoyagi in Tokyo, he recognized that the work was world-class and correct. Aoyagi was over the moon. And so, Aoyagi's hard work wasn't lost to time. In 2012, he received a Lifetime Achievement Award at a U.S. medical symposium. Aoyagi smiles happily alongside Dr. Severinghouse.